Would you like to animate a catwalk cycle like this? In this animation tutorial, I'm gonna show you how step by step. Catwalk cycles and quadruped animations in general are very challenging. They confuse a lot of animators, even at a very basic level, which also means there's a huge opportunity for you. It means that if you're capable of animating a catwalk cycle with decent weight, it could help get you hired, especially in VFX. So let's get started. And by the way, be sure to check out the end of this video if you want a cat run cycle tutorial. Let's have some fun. The starting point for this cat walk cycle, lion walk cycle, um, should be the same as really any other animation. You want to look for reference, do some planning, really research what you're animating and break things down frame by frame. So that's what I've done here in Sync Sketch. I've just brought a, this reference into Sync Sketch and I've, I've mapped out the poses. I've also re researched, you know, to really, to figure out where those poses are. I've, you know, gone through this frame by frame and looked at what the shoulders are doing, what the chest is doing as far as the, the rotates, the up and down, how the feet really peel off the ground, all that stuff. And the great thing about Sync Sketch is I could take this reference and download the video with the sketches and bring it into Maya if I really want to have all that stuff um, just easily shown where I'm like, okay, this was the down pose. I don't have to remember on that frame, you know, that's when that down pose was. Um, if you want to find these clips, you can just go to like Getty Images is a good place or YouTube. Uh, here you can put lions into Getty Images and now you've got videos of lions running and you can just search through, you know, whatever you're looking for, that lion walk, a lion trot, uh, and and you can pull it up and you don't actually have to buy it because we're not trying to get rid of the Getty logo. We're just trying to see how they move. Um, so what you do is you just right click over the video and save video as to get that video. So we're gonna use a rig from Truong CG Artist here. He's got a lot of great rigs on there. They, they got a leopard my rig, which is very similar to what we'll be using. Uh, but we're gonna be using this lion rig just so that we, we have the look of a lion. Um, you, he's even got a discount code to type in for free to get the rig for free. So. You can go in here and pick that up and uh, you can use the same exact rig that I'm using or you can find your own. Once you've got your reference and you've studied it and then you've also found the my rig you wanna use, you wanna set up your scene here. So I've I've pulled the reference into the scene so that I can, I can go through it frame by frame as we animate and have that as a guide. And you can just literally go to view image plane and import the movie. Um, and I've imported it with the sketches I made on Sync Sketch so I know where all my main poses are um, throughout the walk. Um, then as far as the rig setup goes, to make this rig work uh, for what we want to do, the easiest way, I've got this IK spine so the chest I can move up and down independently from the hip. Um, and I've made the tail completely global so it doesn't follow. Uh, whatever the hip is doing, we can really control the, the tail independently. And I've made it all FK chain so that we can really control uh, that overlap easier and have it all affect each other. Um, and then for the head, I've just gone with an FK head through here. The head's on global though, uh, so we can keep the head looking in a constant direction without the chest really like pulling that eye line down. Um, IK feet like usual. And then we've done something special here for the shoulders. So for these shoulders, you'll you'll see here when I hit W and pull up the move tool that our axis is a bit uh, tilted. You know, we've got Z this way, we've got Y that way and X down there. And just for the graph editor, it would make a lot more sense, you know, if um, the Y was like straight up and down, we would be able to edit our curves and really get the weight that we want out of this for gravity a lot easier if the translate Y was straight up and down. So I've parented, uh, I've, I've put a locator like exactly where this control pivot is and I've parented the controller to the locator. So the locator derives that controller and now you see that up and down is straight up and down and, and translate Y and Z is forward and back like usual. 
and so this drives the whole shoulder. Um, this allows me to get clean arcs really quickly without having like two different Mayakers fighting each other. And then um, I've set these shoulder controls, the scapulas, um, to be global on 10 so they move independently from the chest and gives me really good control over them. And with that, we are ready to start blocking this animation out. Now that we have our shot set up here with our rig, our reference, and we've studied the reference, let's start blocking it out. It's gonna be a 33 frame cycle. So we're gonna have keys on the pelvis and chest on frame one, nine, 17, 25, and 33. And 33 will be where our cycle loops. So 33 will be the same as frame one. And I'm gonna approach this in a very pose to pose manner. So we're gonna be working a lot through just these keyframes uh, with the pelvis and the chest and then the legs uh, within that. So 17, one and 33 for the, uh, for the pelvis is the down pose. So I'm just gonna pull the translate Y down here and try to start figuring out how far I can push that to get the most weight out of the walk without without the pelvis being too busy. And I'm going to add some rotate X here to bend the pelvis down as it translates down. And it's very common to go back and forth between these two trying to get the values right. So we're going to be doing that a lot here in the blocking to find out how far to really push um, how far to really push this. So I'm just gonna copy the value from frame one over to 17 and 33 here. So everything's the same. I'm just feeling if there's enough change there in rotation for the movement that we have and kind of seeing what we get with the reference change, the change in pose there. And I would add some translate X here, you know, some side to side movement, but the down and up poses aren't where the extreme is for that on the pelvis. So we're gonna save that for later. And I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, tweaking these feet here for the back legs. I'm gonna mirror them on frame 17 because they're doing the opposite thing that they are doing on frame one. You know, they're, they're, uh, the other foot's coming forward. And then I'm gonna grab the front legs here and do the same thing on frame 17. We also need to add some rotate Y to the chest. So on frame one here, the chest will be rotated in Y towards the leg that's closest to us. Okay, so on 17, it's going this, you know, the opposite direction that we just put on one. And we can have it be the same amount. So if it's 10 on frame one, we'll make this one negative 10. And then with the front legs, I'm really gonna have to adjust these shoulders. So the back leg is back and uh, up a little bit, and then the front leg is down and forward more. So we get, uh, you know, a lot straighter leg there, a lot less broken. So again, these are the contact poses for the chest, and this is where the up poses are for the pelvis. So back on the pelvis, I'm adding that rotate Y twist that we just put into the chest. And as these are different poses, it's gonna be a little bit different. Like these are more in between of the twist. The rotate Y usually tends to max out on the contact pose. So I'm just kind of playing around with this here, knowing that it's gonna twist back um, towards the leg that's back. through here and we'll adjust it later back to the chest I know we're jumping around a little here uh, but I like to kind of take it a piece at a time so I'm gonna add the translate Y in the chest real quick so on frame 9 for the chest this is the passing pose because 1 is a contact 17 is a contact halfway in the middle is a passing pose so the chest is coming up here. That's why I'm putting the TY up. You can see that in the reference. Now as we step forward, we're gonna to go to the next passing pose on frame 25. 
And we're going to try to make that the same amount. So I'm just going to copy the value over to that frame. And as you can see, my reference sometimes doesn't match up exactly on the same frame for each pose, but for the cycle, I'm making them the same. And back on the passing pose here on frame nine, I'm gonna zero out the rotate Y because that's usually where it's zero is on that passing pose. And rotate Z in this case will be the extreme. So we're actually gonna be pointed high towards the foot that's gonna take the weight. And the front leg is gonna be coming back so that's the one that's really taking the weight. So we're high on the side with the leg that's closest to us. And this is where the shoulder also goes up the highest, the scapula. So translate Y goes really high there to show that shoulder blade taking that weight. And we got a very nice straight leg. So I'm just trying to find how far back that foot needs to be, I'm trying to split the difference with the contact pose. And I'm just kind of tweaking that rotate Z, make sure it's good enough. From the front view, this is helpful uh, to really see that. And then also put in some translate X here. So that when we go on to that leg that's taking the weight, we shift the chest and translate X on top of that leg. And the other foot is picking up. It's actually going in the air, as you can see in the reference. So that's what I'm gonna put in, is I'm gonna put that shoulder drop and that leg lift. So that paw picks up here on frame nine and we're gonna rotate that foot down just in rotate X. Give Now we'll give it a little bit of a twist because that, that paw tends to kick in uh, and then flip out. So it's like a, it's almost like a handshake how you kinda Twist your, your hand in and then and then bring it out. Cats tend to do this quite a bit where they, they really flick it out at the end. So it gives that paw like a really nice roll. And that paw tends to be just, just next to the, the leg that's taking the weight. So they, they're in that very, in the middle position uh, as they're going forward and just barely off the ground, you know, with the way that it's rotated. The scapula, again, will be down and forward through there because there's no weight on that leg. And it's coming forward because that's really, you know, pulling the leg forward to reach frame 17. And I'm just gonna use tween machine to half make sure I'm really halfing the distance forward there and back to the pelvis feet on frame nine we can put in another pose here like we did for the chest so this foot is coming forward get rid of the roll ankle and this rotation I put there on that control It'll be easier to figure out the distance of where these feet need to be once we get the other poses in. But for right now, I'm just trying to get it close to what we see in the reference. So lifting that foot up off to the ground. Trying to get a nice shape in the paw. And since this is really the first time I'm using this rig, I'm kind of experimenting with those two controllers there and how to get the right paw shape. But I think we can get away with most of the time just using that uh, that main box around the, the paw itself rather than these spheres. And this foot is really just barely off the ground. So I'm, um, I'm gonna drop it down here. I try to leave that paw just scraping the floor because uh, it, you know, it's almost making contact, but not quite yet. 
You can see in the reference too that there's a little bit of a lift up with the paw, so I'm trying to get that, but, but not sacrificing some shape. That foot's going to still be coming forward. This back foot here is, uh, is, is going back quite a bit. It's going to be holding a fair amount of weight, not as much as the passing position will, um, but it will be further back and the, the hawk will be up. So These contact poses I'm going to go ahead and tweak too because we don't, you know, that's we want a clean shape for the back feet. So... Gonna play around with that roll ankle. Make sure that's always moving up. By the time we're here on frame 17, I really want that toe, the toes to be touching the ground and everything else to be really coming up and uh, getting straighter. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy what's on frame one to frame 33 to Oh, I, I missed the control there. I'm gonna copy what's going on in frame one with that control over to 33, so it doesn't. There's no difference between those two frames, and we're gonna be doing that a lot because we want that cycle to hook up and be identical. I'm just gonna push the up and down because I can see in the reference we could use some more change now that I got the leg in there. See how far I can really straighten that leg out. Make nine the same as twenty-five here. I think, I think that's working better. I like, I like where that's at. So I'm gonna copy that over for the translate Y, and then let's take a look at the rotate, uh, rotate Y. Because again, these are the up and down poses for the pelvis. So I want frame nine to kind of favor where the contact is gonna be. So I'm gonna bring nine down. And I'll actually bring 25 up because the contact is going to be higher up than that. And it's extreme rotate Y. So it'd be right, right around frame 29 and um, 13. And the Z, um, it might be easier to put this in once we have the passing pose, but I can rough, rough this in right now. So down pose will be going towards the leg that's going to take the weight which is that um, foot that's closest to us on frame one and then that means frame 17 will be the opposite so now our rotate z is going somewhere which is good and i'm going to select everything and stamp a key on frame 9 and 25 just to make sure that we've got those keyframes locked in uh, for the changes that we've made so far. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take the front legs now that we got that key, and I'm gonna mirror it so it's the opposite of frame nine. And I'm using Anambot here to do this mirroring, um, but there's, you know, you can do this by hand if you don't have Anambot or a mirroring tool. And the chest here, I'm gonna mirror that because we know that the, uh, the weight is on the other side. Um, so check your, check your rotates and your translates, make sure that it mirrored correctly. Um, if the weight in translate X should be going over the planted foot and it should be rotated high on that leg. And then I just noticed in here too that the, uh, the toe is, it was kicking up weird. So I'm gonna set some keys to make sure that it, it doesn't give us weird shapes through there and when it's on the ground and then when it's in the air. It's the, uh, the dew claw, is what that's called. And then trying to keep no rotates on that sphere control. And let's tweak those shoulders because we didn't mirror those. So the shoulder with the planted leg is going up and forward, giving us that nice straight. And 
with the other leg, we're gonna be down and splitting the difference in translate Z. So I'm just using the tween machine to make sure that it's half in the middle for now. Um, and then pushing it down some. And I think I think this side looks looks okay. Yeah, I don't want to come back that much. It's killing the shape. We can bring this one more forward. Maybe a little higher up. I'm still trying to keep that leg as straight as I can through there. And now we've got a, a better arc with that shoulder coming across, just flipping through those frames. pelvis on frame 25 we're gonna mirror that too because we haven't tweaked that pose and I'm gonna mirror the feet so that they're they're moving forward like they should be taking that step forward with the proper leg now we're gonna rotate that foot down and uh, zero out that roll ankle for the moment um, it looks like I'm getting some extra rotation on here though um, I'm not sure where that's coming from at the moment, or what what I might have keyed with this rig, um, but we'll find it. I'll uh, I'll move forward with this, and uh, and you know, once we start adding the extra keys, I'll see what got rotated and just zero that out and fix it real quick. That's the part of the joy of learning a new rig is figuring out which controls uh, you typically move for all these things. With the other foot, um, we're gonna bring that roll ankle up because it's taking the weight through here. The other foot's in the air, it's almost gonna contact. And then this one's sliding back still. And we gotta give some room for it to go because the contact pose is gonna go even further. Uh, from 25, it's going to go into like frame 29 where it's where it's further back, and this one will be just coming down in contact with the ground. Yeah, I'm not going to tweak this. That's losing too much. And that's going to conclude our blocking pass, our first blocking pass. We got the contacts and passing pose in the chest, and then the up and down in the pelvis. So from here, we'll go into blocking plus, and uh, we'll start adding some of those extra keys in there that are missing for both the pelvis and the chest. Here's a quick look at our blocking again, so you can compare your animation before you start blocking plus. Now with blocking plus, we're gonna add these key poses that have been missing for the chest and pelvis up until now. So the chest here needs its down pose on frame five. Uh, the front leg will come back and start to really take the weight. Um, and the other one will be just about to pick up off the ground. So I'm gonna tween this here. So translate Z is about halfway and our shoulders about halfway since we had a good guide um, from the pose we already set. The da uh, the, uh, the chest itself, the translate Y, will be low. Um, you could make this the down, but I am kind of sticking to my reference here. It's a little um, tricky. It looks like it starts to, the chest starts to rise up just ever so slightly through there. So I think our down, like in translate Y, will actually be like frame three, like our extreme down. And this will be like easing out of it. So this back foot is still sliding back and we just need that, you know, that uh, ankle to really roll forward um, and pivot off those to toes. So just using my roll ankle here um, with a combination of rotation and translates and toe roll to try to get that ankle to roll off the ground here with what I got in the rig. 
Again, still experimenting a little bit to find out what is the easiest way to get those kinds of shape changes with as few as a few attributes as possible. So I don't want to keyframe 50 things to do one move if I can do two things. So just tweening the rotates so I get a quick result. I don't have to go and set every keyframe. Um, we're going to rotate forward here quite a bit. So I'm going to make that the extreme rotate forward on this down pose. Because again, that chest is moving down. I'm just looking at the reference to see if we're getting enough change there. And this will be our up pose, so I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate that that way, the opposite direction, and put, bring that chest up high on frame 13. Frame 21 again will be in our, our second down pose. And I'm gonna tweak them both to be the same. I decided just to just bring this a little bit lower overall. Um, and then we'll probably make frame three even lower than that. So the dip is a little bit sharper. Putting these feet in again real quick, same result. the shoulders doing all right we could bring it back a little farther maybe drop it down a little bit let's see how it changes between these keys yeah we need it coming down and back a little bit and then Now I'm just going to with this back right foot, we're just going to make sure we add in those key poses here. So frame five, that foot's coming back for that passing pose where it really takes the weight. Try to find that center point. <clears throat> And same with the other foot, it's gonna be coming forward, um, kind of reaching that center point, that halfway in between. I 
added some rotation to it as it comes forward so we get some angle change that hawk uh, that ankle is going to roll forward a bit <clears throat> Back left foot feels okay for now. Um, let's make sure we go to the back right foot now and, and tweak that passing pose. So on frame five, it's coming back. Use the tween machine to um, translate Z halfway. Then let's check our hip rotation. Let's make sure our hip is doing the right thing before it affects our leg too much. So I'm just gonna halfway the rotate Z. Um, we got the rotate Y in there. Um, but I want to favor the extreme that it's going towards. And the passing pose actually needs to be an extreme um, there because the weight shift is going on to that back right leg so it's not just a halfway in between like what, what we got when we hit the tween machine but our, it got our key in there quick and the translate x we also need that to be on the extreme there so um, I'm just going back now that we have that extreme on frame 5 and uh, having it ease in on frame 1 towards that and ease out of it a little bit creating some more change overall through all those poses because we didn't tweak the, the TX then. It's easier to tweak it now that we got the one passing pose on there. And as it starts to go into the passing pose, it's the, the pelvis is lifting, so we're gonna rotate up. It just won't rotate as high as it does in the up pose, so I'm trying to keep that in mind. Uh, give it somewhere to go through there. And I wanna make sure I can feel it based off of the reference, um, so that it feels similar. Our high pose is also closer to the up, so we're really feeling the weight in that hip because it shoots up quick and hangs up high for a while. Super key, super basic and essential. I'm gonna copy that over to frame 21 because it's pretty much the same thing with uh, with all the hips and we're just gonna mirror the feet. I just wanna make sure too that I'm saving the, uh, the rotate X there on that uh, ankle roll um, for 21 to make sure that that's uh, gonna gonna be there when we mirror everything over. So I'm gonna mirror that. Zero out that roll there. Probably add more roll because that heat that ankle is really lifting up through here, and uh, it's gonna pick up off the ground. Quickly tween machine those to get some, some a decent starting point. And go back and mirror the rear feet here on 21, just like we did with the chest, the front legs. Still not sure if I really want to use this ankle roll, but I'm just kind of feeling it out right now. Seeing if that's the way to go. I do know I need that to kind of match the angle of the, the pelvis. And I kind of make sure we're mirroring the hips too. Mirroring the chest. Almost forgot that.
down, up, up. That's working well. Missing a key frame on here just to make sure we're really pinning that down uh, on the rotate Y, so. I want that there because I need to favor the extremes um, and be a little quicker through the middle, so. That looks all right for now, and then uh, zero out that that ankle roll there. We don't need the the ankle or the heel of the paw lifting there. We don't want that. We want that foot flat. So just go through and stamp all over our keys. Make sure that's not messing anything up. We're only going to really use it where the foot picks up, if anywhere. So just want to pin that down before we auto tangent that, and then we get a ton of in-betweens that we don't need um, with it just drifting and screwing up our foot. For the rotate Y here on frame 13, I'm going to make this the extreme. And then I, you know, I want to favor into that. And one and thirty-three will be fairly high up too. Uh, they'll be close to the extreme, so I'm just gonna bump them up a little bit and make sure they're the same, just to keep it all clean for now. Rotate X, I wanna make sure that, uh, you know, we still have some change here on frame 13. So it's starting to bend down, but it's still favoring the high that it, it's coming out of. And uh, I think that's okay for now. Let's check the rotate Z. We need some more change through these keys. So frame nine is gonna be, um, you know, favoring that one. And 17 can kind of favor a little bit higher here. And the translate Y here, we're just gonna make sure there's some change. It's still gonna be up a bit. Uh, I might be favoring the down too much there, but we'll we'll fill that out later. Now for this foot, we're gonna rotate it down, zero out the rotate X. And then I think we can get rid of this extra roll that's going on. So I, I'm gonna zero out that ankle roll control I used before. And then I think we're still getting some weird shape in the foot. I wonder if it's is it coming from the roll up here. If I just zero that out. Yeah, I think I want to keep that and uh, maybe just make sure that's zeroed for the whole foot everywhere and only use the, the roll ankle. I think that's the better way to go for this, this back foot. All right, so for the other foot, I'm just gonna slide this back a little bit so it kind of more matches the gait in our reference. How long those, how, how much the stride length is there for the feet. And just kind of flipping through to see how that ankle comes up, how, how the, it goes on the toes here. So I'm gonna try to add some of that to get that shape right as close as I can to that reference and push it back. So this foot's a little overstretched right now. I could use more roll ankle, um, but I think I'm just going to push the foot back ever so slightly because it's a little far forward and I think we'll be able to make that work. I'm just gonna make sure that later when I add an in-between in there that it kicks out farther on the way down. So I'm gonna make sure the roll is zeroed out and just kind of recreate the poses that we had there. So that way the, the roll attribute on this foot doesn't mess with the other rotations we're doing. Now 
Now let's add some of that roll ankle in there to give that uh, foot some change as it takes the weight. Um, typically as it comes down, the weight drops down, that, that ankle will drop a little bit lower and then it will go up. So I'm gonna try to recreate that later. Uh, really keep that in mind. And for this foot, I'm gonna make sure I get rid of that roll as well, because I don't want that affecting um, these back feet here. Just don't wanna have to counter animate a bunch of different rotations and fight Maya. Adjust these poses a little bit now that we got rid of that roll. Zero out that rotation pretty much and uh, add a little bit of that um, roll ankle up so that it's more in line with the pelvis. Set a key there just to uh, not. these front feet. I'm going to make sure I set a key on 13 so that they're keep, they keep coming forward through there. It's, you know, almost touching the ground. The rotations continue. So they, they kind of flatten out. I'm just seeing how far I can really push that stretch forward. Um, and this foot I want to make sure is, is going back, so. And the translate Y here on this chest needs to be at a high point. It's the up pose. Don't want to move everything. Move that one. Yeah key up here on 13 so that it's at a high point and then it starts to come down. It's really key for our weight. And our rotate X uh, needs some attention so as 13 is our high point, that'll be our extreme for the rotate, the bend back. And later we'll probably offset that so we get some overlap. This looks fine for now. And the translate X for the foot, we gotta keep in mind too, because that foot is arcing as it comes forward. It's not just going in a straight line. So we want that foot to swing out as it comes forward. It's gonna swing out and then come in as it contacts the ground. So I'm just kind of adding some of that here real quick with the graph editor and bringing those feet in a little bit more. Making sure they're they're all landing in the same spot throughout the animation. Of course, the shoulders we gotta add some keyframes for frame thirteen, two. Gotta get all those parts in there, and then when we let Maya take over soon, um, it'll be fairly solid for us. We won't have as much cleanup to do. Let me 
make sure one always make sure one and 33 are the same because you might catch that later or it might be harder to spot and just watch your arcs on those shoulders um, make sure they're always going full they're always arcing up and down and forward and back Gonna favor that high in the passing position so we really feel that shoulder weight, that scapula. We will be looking for more change in that shoulder as it as it picks up, but uh, for now I'm gonna first go ahead and set a key for the last real key pose that we're missing on frame 29. So every four frames, we've got a key pose. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mirror the pelvis, mirror the chest, um, just like we've been doing, and mirror the feet. So they're, they're going the right way around and pretty much doing exactly what we did with the other keys that we already set for both of these legs. And we're in a good spot with this, so I'm gonna you know, just that roll ankle real quick. Make sure that's coming forward because the foot's about to pick up. Gonna roll onto those toes. That looks good there. And then the, just do a quick pass checking the the pelvis so our rotate y is at the extreme on 29 here the other way because that's our contact then for frame 29 here we need more change so um, 21's our passing pose 25 needs to favor that passing pose and then contact will be at zero and that completes our blocking plus right now. We got all our key poses in. Um, this is looking pretty good. So we'll move from this into auto tangent and start refining the animation. Here's our blocking plus play blast. So you can check your animation against it. And then we'll start refining. Now that we're ready to refine our animation, it's time to swap our tangent curves over to auto. So I'm gonna select everything here um, and Select it in the graph editor and hit auto tangent. And we also gotta remember to go to our settings and preferences and change our default tangents to auto instead of flat and stepped. And that way, every time we set a key, we won't have stepped keys kind of appearing in our auto tangents and fighting Maya. From there, we're going to start checking our in-betweens here for the chest and the hips. Uh, we'll start with the chest here, just really checking our translation Y up and down. And frequently, we're going to see here on frame 33 and, and on 1 that it's not really in-betweening correctly. Um, for this translate Y, we're going to lift that up a little bit and change that curve so that it, it's not easing out of that position it's a little faster through because we wanted to ease out of the high point on frame 29 and the TNX here uh, translate X here is a little messy I'm just trying to favor the extremes a little bit more there and then change 33 and 31 for the same reason so that it doesn't really ease in and out of those areas. And we're really easing in and out of the extremes. It's a little bit little bit cleaner with those with those frames and that spacing. So it feels okay. And then Take a look again at the up and down. Yeah, I think we could just scale down how high 
the chest is so that it doesn't feel like the chest is bouncing up higher than the pelvis. If anything, I, I would probably want the pelvis to feel like it's pushing more up because it's supposed to be doing more of the the push, the power of the walk than the chest is. So I'm just toning that up and down, scaling that down um, so it's not as intense. Which will, you know, ultimately affect our legs. So that's why we're starting with the chest and the pelvis before we really start adding extra keys on the legs. And you can just check the arc tracker to see if you're creating a nice figure eight. That's what you should have is, is some kind of figure eight through there. And you can play around with, with you know, um, rounding that out if you want. Um, but it's good to have that visual to know if your changes are really breaking that figure eight or making it better. And so here you can see that if I just push the, the translate X there, we start to round out the, the figure eight arc a little bit more, um, which might make it feel a little bit more organic, but this is like a, you know, a fairly minor thing because it's mostly working. For the rotate X here, this feels pretty solid. It's mainly the ease in and ease out that shouldn't be happening on frame one and 33. Should just be kind of picking up speed there and going to that extreme bend down. So now that that chest is uh, checked out with those curves, uh, let's work on the pelvis. And I'm just starting with the translate Y here, like I did on the chest. I'm gonna boost that up a little bit so that we feel that a little more. Um, trying to push it as much as I can so we get more power and, and weight out of it, um, but also making sure the legs can can reach. So um, it's pretty common to play play around with this back and forth. And the more that I can lift it on the contact, the faster it'll kind of come down into the down pose, so it'll feel like it has more weight. So favoring that that up and down, that high point, you know, really helps us out. And then, you know, as I'm watching the reference here through this, I really just want to see if the hip just kind of feels like it has the same amount of movement in our animation. Um, and what I noted earlier is that here we are going to is actually where where I really feel that that pelvis drop the most, and then it starts to come up um, after that. So I'm adding an extra key to really control those in betweens and really dip the pelvis down on frame 15, and then I'm raising up 17 to um, you know kind of ease out of that position. I'm not putting it lower here because I'm not. I think that'll really probably affect our leg shapes too much. Um, so I'm just kind of keeping it up that high um, and seeing if I can maintain the weight just kind of by, by pushing it up a little bit quicker. This is something you definitely want to fill out based on a reference and rig basis um, because every rig and reference is a little bit different there, like in terms of how much the pelvis is moving and how far your rig can can go with the legs. And I'm gonna repeat the same thing on frame 31. Um, just that's where that, that extra dip will happen again before it hits frame 33. And now as I'm watching this playback, I'm really feeling that there is that little dip and kick up in the pelvis. It's a lot more noticeable now, so that's what I was looking for. You constantly want to play back your animation just see if you can feel the weight or feel the changes you're putting in. And for rotate Y and Z here, I'm just going to frame 31 and 33 and getting rid of those ease out, ease in, and ease outs and favoring the extremes with some of the other in-betweens. So, so our curves 
working a little bit better with uh, you know better spacing and dropping down frame one and 33 there to um, kind of favor that extreme. I think the rotate axe here looks looks pretty good. So just back to the chest real quick. Um, make sure that weight feels solid now that we made those changes to the, the pelvis and the it's not overpowering it or anything. Um, I'm gonna try just bring it down a bit more. Same deal there, I'm gonna try to bring that down. And, and now I think we're good to go ahead and start on the front legs. So I'm gonna start with the front left foot and I'm gonna add a key on 15 where that uh, foot really comes further forward and translates Z, rounding out the arc. As you can see here with the arc tracker, it kind of rounds out that arc. It's gonna make it really feel like he's stretching that leg as it comes forward to plant the foot down. From here, we really gotta add some extra keys to define the foot pickup, and then, you know, how that foot rolls coming forward, you know, with rotations and has a nice arc from the front, as well as from this side view, so. I'm just gonna start here with frame seven. Uh, you know, kind of coming out of five, that's where our foot really picks up and it's gonna be kind of slowing out of that position, um, going a little bit further back. Um, and then I'm just kind of adjusting that, spacing knowing that um, with our passing pose. So here, we're gonna have to use a combination of, of some of that uh, roll ankle, uh, tote bend and everything and rotation of the foot to get it to kind of peel off the ground, leaving the toes behind as the last thing to lift just over a couple of frames. You can see we're kind of getting, it's, you know, it's a really a game of shapes. I'm not going to use these circle controls because it really is just going to interfere with whatever I'm doing on the square control here. So I'm going to use some of the roll ankle. Looking at that ankle shape there above the foot and the elbow to make sure those things are arcing and they're giving a constant shape change, so they're not getting stuck in space because all of that, all of those joints in the the leg really do arc they don't stick and it will cause a pop um, if we have too big of a change or too little of a change there so same deal here i'm just trying to figure out how far i i go with each of it and um, how to keep that nice shape so i kind of want to blend into that shape that i have there in the middle and that that part feels okay but the, the pickup itself needs some tweaking and we'll probably have to you know finagle that into place here in a minute but real quick we can just go ahead and put some translate x in here so that it arcs out as that foot comes forward so on the passing pose we'll have it at its extreme tx and then it will just kind of start to dip in just before it uh, plants it in the ground it's really quick to do with the arc tracker as a guide. Um, this one in Anambot works really well if you have that. Um, but there's tons of arc trackers out there. So I can just grab the whole Translate X there and, and just kind of kick the whole foot in a little bit because we want those feet to really be under the chest more than out to the side. It makes the cat more balanced and 
how they normally are. There will be some toe drag because the toes are the last thing to really pick up um, and it gives us some lead and follow. So we can put some of that in. It's, it's a polishy thing. Um, but here on frame one, I'm just gonna see if... Here, yeah, more like frame, frame three, I think we'll do some toe roll to start getting that ankle to lift before the toes do. And I want to make sure that the, none of these circle controls have any animation on it, which they do right now, and then it will affect, like I said, what's on the square controller. So we're just doing some cleanup from that blocking to make sure that's not messing with us. So we got some toe roll on frame three, a little bit of toe roll on frame one, kind of easing into that. And then more of it on frame five. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep the toe roll at zero for frame seven, and we'll use frame six to kind of blend into it um, with a combination of the roll ankle, the toe, and you know, moving the regular foot controller. You can see the toes are going through the ground here, so we're gonna have to really frame by frame that and, and pay attention to the shape of the foot and where the, you know each part of that foot is rather than where the controller is so we don't get any pops and we get a really smooth peel off with nice spacing. So we'll we'll lift the foot we'll, and we'll bend those toes in. I'm gonna use a little of the toe roll there too and some of that, possibly some of that ankle. But it looks like that, as far as the, the bottom of that paw is concerned, looks fairly smooth. And that dew claw is doing some weird stuff. That, that like thumb toe. Um, let me tweak that real quick. I'm just going to add a couple of keys so that it's not giving us weird shapes as that foot is rotating and bending. So we don't have any keyframes on it, so just kind of key it to the side, and it's almost like default position. You can just zero it out if you want, um, and it will drag. You know, when the foot picks up, it'll drag behind. Like there, it won't be so far ahead. It'll be behind, like where the toes are. And we could play around with having some like uh, drag on it as it flops down and stuff. I'm just trying to keep it from looking weird right now and really keep those shapes clean before getting carried away with any of that overlap. Okay, so just trying out that roll ankle, keeping keeping an eye on where how that's that that ankle is arcing. Now that we've got all those movements, and uh, I don't really feel any pops here as we're kind of playing it back. That shape, the shape's a little ugly. I wish I could get a nicer shape here. Um, I think that's working okay though. Like it, it blends nicely into the next pose. It'd just be great if I could kind of speed out of that a little bit more and tweak the uh, 
tweak the ankle just a little here. I'm watching right where that ankle bends, and I'm kind of seeing how how it creates an arc as it goes from one frame to the next. I'm just trying to make that smooth, um, a nice smooth arc based off of all the keys that we've set. Um, but I think this is working pretty well. I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. So I think we're going to just swap over to the other foot now real quick and pretty much do the same thing. And as we're doing the same thing, I'm going to make sure I set, um, you know, it's frame it's frame 21, 22 where the other foot starts to pick up off the ground. So I'm going to set a key on that. And then I'm going to just mirror over our foot position. 22 and 23 is the same thing that's happening on 6 and 7 for the other foot. So I'll mirror that there and then uh, mirror it on 23. And then we just uh, obviously need to adjust some of the rotations there. That's not how we want the foot looking. Um, but this should save us a lot of time because um, we already really worked out the other foot spacing and everything uh, frame by frame. So I'm going to just zero out whatever is on these. Nothing on that circle control. There's some animation here. So I'm going to go ahead and zero this one out. And then we just got to do the same thing for frame 21. So yeah, we'll just go to frame 21 and we'll zero this one out too. And then it's looking much better. And we can go ahead and add some of that toe roll that we had on the other foot that wasn't on this one. Um, so that didn't get mirrored over. And we'll just keep that paw lifting up with a little bit of that roll ankle and make sure that ankle is leading that paw, pulling that paw up. And just kind of feel through the arcs there and the ankle and the paw and the toes. See if anything's really poppy. Uh, again, just looking at the shape of the rig and not the controllers. The shape of the geometry. So I'm gonna tweak frame 22 here to blend a little nicer. We just need a little translate in there. Yeah. And then, yeah, try to keep that paw or that ankle going forward and arcing. And I think, I think that's working pretty well. So let's go ahead and check out the Translate X here, um, much like we did for the other foot, and see if that how that, that's working here. From the front view, it's really easy to tell if, if the foot's in too much or how close you can get. Um, so it's good to look from that front view if uh, you can't see something too clear from in perspective. So here, um, we need that curve to actually do the opposite. You could just mirror it, or you could do it by hand real quick like I'm doing here. And it's going to start to come in around there. It's about thought that that was our extreme. And then here it's going to start easing in or out of that, that extreme. Again, you can arc track this or you could just mirror that curve that, that we we copied over here. It doesn't feel too bad though to me. Um, just check our translate here. I want this foot to always be going somewhere. I don't know if that I don't know if that made it better or if that broke our frame by frame. Yeah, I think we just need to keep what we had there because like, you know, just a little bit of lift, but uh, sometimes the, the graph editor curves don't make sense for the shape changes you're getting in the actual rig because you're using so many different attributes. And I'm just adding a little bit of toe drag through there so that as that foot comes forward, that toe drags behind. Right there, yeah. I 
think that's working pretty pretty smooth pickup always important to just keep scrubbing through your animation and see if you can feel out that movement you can feel the weight and feel the the nice arcs um, you know feel if any part feels floaty or poppy but this side seems okay let's check our translate X uh, in the front view really make make sure that there's yeah there's a little bit of sliding going on so I'm just flattening that out um, and it's just gonna slowly ease into that arc coming out and with that I think now would be a great time to get some toe squash and depending on the rig you might have toe or, or like a paw squash on your main foot control um, this one I don't think has has anything there really there for that in the in the channel box on the on the main control but we've got this extra toe control here that I'm going to use to just kind of fake some toe squash by spreading the the toes out itself uh, I think we'll use a combination of the foot spread and some maybe even the foot individual toe controls too to get that to work So we'll need to set some keys on this if you don't already have it. And uh, let's add that foot spread so that as the, the foot comes onto the ground, those toes spread out a little bit right after the contact, right? So it makes it feel like they're starting to take the weight. And then maybe as they pick up the, that spread, that's where that ends, you know, they, they kind of come in and kind of become more sol solid and less less spread out and flexed so we're just figuring out where those extremes are and uh adding that in so we're going to really hold tightly through there when that paws on the ground and then here it's going to uh really lose a lot of the the spread it'll it'll just kind of tighten in So we get, that way we get more change through there. We want it to feel a little bit sharp so we can feel the, the weight onto the foot. If we had a paw squash where we could actually like squash the whole paw, that would be another way to, I think, make this look even better. Um, but we'll use what we got. This isn't too bad. I know that the the toes right now are really crazy spread out, so I'm gonna I'm try I'm gonna try to tone that down. I'm not really happy. I don't want it to look like the toe his paw is like a starfish or anything. Just kind of feeling that out, see if, see if that's enough. I think we could use a little bit of the individual toe rotation to help we can make it feel maybe like those, those paws dig in a little too as they go back. Not, not a lot, just, just a touch. And then obviously they would, they wouldn't come necessarily back up. They would hold in the ground a little bit more through there. Just want them to feel like they're solid in the ground and not really like sitting above it. And then as that comes forward, it'd be great to have these toes on the side be a little bit different. Like they're dragging a little bit behind and kind of helping our foot peel off so it gives us a, a little bit nicer shape from where those toes used to be it's kind of feels like it's dragging from that point and it makes it feel feel a little bit more organic because each toe isn't doing the exact same thing on the exact same frame this is kind of polishy stuff um you know it's just kind of icing on the cake so make sure you get the weight right before you play around with this I just wanted to show you 
how you could go about, you know, adding some some nice details in there. Uh, really quickly here and kind of roughly to to um, to just give this walk, you, you know, a little extra life. Of course, we can go ahead and do the same thing to the other foot. Um, you can copy everything over. You can do it by hand. I'm just going to quickly like speed through this section. Um, just time lapse that so you can see kind of me applying the same thing. Like when it's down on the ground, it's spreading out and kind of holding tightly when it's on the ground to holding the weight. And then as soon as it starts to lift, that spread of the toes uh, starts to go away. So just very much the same thing. Um, it's a nice little extra detail. And you could take, take your time with this later and, you know, polish this stuff up so it feels just right. Um, this is pretty rough and loose here. I'm just... Uh, trying to get a general feeling of it. I think it's it's probably going to be a little bit floatier than than I would want it to be if I was like working on a movie. But and obviously if I was working on a movie I'd really love some some paw squash rather than trying to fake it with the toes. But I think it adds a little extra life to this. Um, just add, again, dragging a couple of those toes behind more to help the shape and kind of split them up and really make it feel like they're, they're peeling off the ground organically. Then dragging those toes as they come forward. It's a lot like you would do for a human walk in terms of dragging the toes and letting them catch up, except, you know, in the human walk, you could have the toes kind of flip up and then come down where they, because the heel is leading. And this, they're walking on, you know, those toes. So uh, those need to make contact first. Um, and then, you know, the whole paw kind of sits on that. So that's what that looks like. Here it is from the front view, just kind of a, a at speed so you get a sense of it uh, but we're ready for the back feet now so so let's get these uh, back feet to peel off the ground properly like the front and I'm gonna zero out the roll attribute on this uh, back left foot and I'm just gonna show you how I go through this whole back left foot and then you can apply the same thing to the other the back right foot because it's just identical uh, just to save you a little bit, bit of time there so yeah, zero out that roll attribute if you're using the exact same rig um, so it doesn't affect the square control. And then, um, you know, with, with the roll ankle and everything else we're doing. And then uh, we're gonna use the roll ankle toe bend and, and possibly the toe roll with the foot rotate to, to get this to peel off properly. A lot like we did with the front foot. So first off, I'm gonna just focus on this roll ankle so that when the weight comes down on it on frame 15, you know, when that pelvis really drops, that hawk, that ankle drops as well. So it like takes the weight. Okay, so that's gonna just kind of shoot up there in the graph editor because of the weight and uh, we want to give it somewhere to go. And here we're gonna start to ease out of that now because it, it went lower than it did before. And then uh, just through here, I'm gonna make sure that that, that hawk, that ankle keeps coming up and that it keeps traveling somewhere. It looks a little too static through here. So I'm gonna try to give it give it uh, a little bit of life, some some movement here. It should keep coming up because it's it's gonna pull that paw off the ground. So I'm gonna make 33 and one the same like usual. Make sure to keep that consistent. 
and then frame 29 let's kind of blend into that and uh, tweak those tangent handles let's bring it down on five here so there's more change probably well let me bring that back a second um, I could really use more change through the air and the hawk seems very flat through there so as it comes back it's coming up 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 and there's not a lot of change there so let's let's make 33 more extreme so it's going further down actually um, so 1 and 33 are the same and then we'll bring 5 down and then 9 down um, so we're kind of 1 and 33 become the extreme for that ankle and then, then I'm just going to rotate the foot 90 degrees here um, and give a little bit of toe drag back so those toes are really dragging off the ground and translate it down so that those toes are more on the ground I actually think too that those toes, let's just zero those toes out and let's do the individual toe control like we had in the front foot. So we have more control of that foot peel off. And I just need to set some keys on there. Um, this is, remember this is the individual foot control. So it's got the spread and I can control each toe independently. So frame 31, I'm just gonna really bend those toes back um, pin the ones on the side down maybe a little bit more so we get nicer shape there like they really feel like they're contacted with the ground they're they're a little bit spread out because they're taking weight and then here we can kind of get a nice curl in them as they lift reluctantly from the ground really pulled off and then we got a an in-between I manually in between peel off for those toes so they they they're fake faked like they're coming off the ground you can go into wireframe like i just did there too to select those controls sometimes that's easier when they're going through the ground and i put this cube ground in specifically for this reason too just real quick just so you can see where the toes need to stay above the ground. Here I want to make t want to make sure too that, that that foot control is continually rotating and arcing forward. So ro rotate X, make sure your rotate X has somewhere to go and you're you're arcing up so you got that translate Y to look at. I don't want the foot to come too high because it's a cat you know it's a normal walk it's not like a run so it should feel fairly casual and the, you know animals and humans are really lazy when we walk we try to use as little energy as possible so we don't like to pick our feet up off the ground too much and here i'm just adding that that same toe drag where i'm dragging that those toes as they come forward from where they used to be. And I'm not going to flip the toes up because they don't really do that. Um, I got to make sure that the, uh, the spread kind of comes back to normal there and then that they're in contact with the ground. So we'll add, we'll add more spread through here where the weight is really on that foot. And then let's adjust these toes so they're properly on the ground. Um, this toe control got a little tilted. We'll fix that in a sec. really feel the spread drop off there um, I want those toes to really feel like they're in the same spot when they're on the ground I don't want them to really lift up through there 
So I'm gonna grab them individually and just make sure they're going down. If anything, they're like digging into the dirt before they pick up. But yeah, I think this is uh, working pretty good. Uh, just you know, do those little toe tweaks. You can apply all the same stuff to the other back foot and you'll have uh, all the feet really, really in a good spot. Um, but from here, I think we're ready to go into polish and I'll show you how to handle you know, animating the head, the tail, the belly, some of the things that we haven't given much attention to so far so we can round this walk out. And here's a play blast of our refined animation so far before polish. Now let's uh, let's start polishing this walk up. We'll focus on uh, first copying the uh, rotate X from the chest and we're gonna put that into the neck. So we're gonna work out this head overlap right now real quick just by taking this curve and reapplying it into the rotate Z on the base of the neck. So I just use Animbot to copy that over real quick, but if you don't have Animbot, you can you can do it manually. And then I'm copying that to the mid neck and the heads uh, rotate Z as well. It's just because the rotation for the, the head and the neck is on a different rotate um, than, the, uh, than the chest. So the chest is X and this is Z. So now it's all in the same frame and what we're gonna wanna do is um, cycle it so that it's gonna continue on past our, our, our frame 33 and we're gonna slide it all back one frame. So it's right now a frame later than the chest. Then I'm gonna grab the mid neck and I'm gonna slide this back one more frame and then the head one more frame. So they're all about one frame apart from each other and the head is three frames uh, later than the chest rotate. So this should give us some, some really quick and dirty overlap on that head. And it's working. I just think it's a little too strong right now, so we're gonna tone that down. So I'm gonna go in here, grab these curves, um, grab the whole thing, and then just put in the value box divide equals two. So now it's half as big as it as it was before on those neck controls. It looks like I should do the same thing to the head too, so. I'll probably do that. So, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and do that on the head. We may even tone it, tone the whole thing down more than what we've got right now. That, that might be okay. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the twisting of the head. So I'm gonna copy the rotate Y from the chest into the neck and head. So I'll grab the base, neck, rotate. Um, rotate Y is what we wanna put it on. So it's the same as the chest in this case. So I'll just select rotate Y there and paste that animation in. And just repeat the same thing for the other controls. I think there's a shortcut actually with Animbot to do all three of these at once, but it doesn't take, take me that long to put that in. So now we have some side to side with the head um, should help it give it more of a figure eight that's in the body. So the head will feel more connected, but it's just swaying too much right now, just like the, the rotate Z was. So we're gonna tone that down. Um, it looked like there was a rotate missing, but I think we're fine. 
And let's quickly cycle the rotate x here. So that continues. Um, and then we're just gonna scale that down. So for the neck, it's the same as the chest, and then for the head, it's uh, rotate X. So it's a little confusing, um, but we're just putting that same Y rotation from the chest into the Y of the two necks, cycling them, scaling them down, and then doing the exact same thing on the head, but putting it on rotate X for this rig, okay. And then I'm just going to offset them by a couple of frames so they're not all rotating at the same time. The same amount, giving us a little bit of quick overlap. So I offsetted that back by three because the mid neck's offset by two. So this should give us if we look in the front view, this should give us a bit of a figure eight with the head. We're kind of rolling as that body moves and does the same thing. <clears throat> Feels pretty good. I definitely recommend, like I said, always do this when you get a chance, just scrubbing through your animation or playing your animation or play blasting it to see how it feels after you've made these these uh, new keyframes or adjustments. Now, we only have one rotation missing. Um, so from, from the chest, um, that's gonna be that rotate Z to really make sure that we, uh, you know, complete our figure eight with the head and neck. So I'm gonna copy the rotate Z here Copy that with Anambot and uh, apply that to the X of the neck because that's this where, where the same kind of movement is. And then it's for the Y on the head for this particular rig. So I'm just gonna grab the rotate X on the necks and slide them back a frame. Cycle them out. Um, bring them back one more frame for um, the middle neck so they're not on the same one and then uh, the rotate Y here, gotta gotta cycle that and offset the frames for this too. I'm gonna tweak that tangent. Three, so three frames offset. That one's two frames offset, and the base neck is one. Yeah, that should really complete our figure eight. And this will be the one that we don't want to have tilt too much because he's trying to keep his head fairly straight. Um, so we'll tone that down. But it's just good to feel the animation out and see if it's arcing and overlapping correctly right now. Which actually the head is rotating the opposite direction that we want. So I'm gonna select the whole rotate Y curve here and just type in the value box uh, slash equals negative one to flip it. And now it's going in the, the same direction as, as it's supposed to. We're gonna take the neck controls rotate X and just scale that down so it's not tilting to the side as much there. So slash equals negative two. Or not negative two, slash equals two. 
And I'm gonna do the same thing here with the, uh, the rotate Y on the head. So slash equals two, just to divide that in half. And now it doesn't rock so much. Um, might be a little too much, but I think it's, I think it's okay. What'll really help with this is translating the neck a little bit so it doesn't go too far screen left or screen right. And I'm just gonna grab the base of the neck here, arc track um, that neck movement and try to counter some of that side to side motion. And we'll reduce the up and down as well. So um, yeah, I think we'll just change how much that head jo jumps up and down and side to side. So I'm gonna go ahead, you can swap to world and just use this arc tracker going super close so we can see what little arcs we're making. And we can see these extremes, so I can just kind of pull that down extreme up higher so it barely drops. It's like half as much as it used to. And you can see that it's kind of using a little bit of translation X and Y in the graph editor because that's what the real axis is. So I went to the second down there and brought that, brought that up. And then I'll drop the high points down on both sides as well. I think we can bring this in a bit too so it doesn't go so far left. I'd say that's the extreme, so let's just kind of kick that over. frame 33 over to frame one. And then let's do the same for the, uh, the left side here. If we just kind of change that a little bit, we can get a little bit more of a loop out of it. You can see that I'm just making this super small now and just have to have to zoom in extra to see it. Um, and you can you can clean this up so that it's uh, so that we have even even though it's a small loop, we can have it really arcing nicely through here. So like as it comes out of this. Just set a new key to give us a nice rounded arc there. And uh, try to do the same on this end. pretty close we don't have to be exactly the same on either side we're just trying to have that smoother arc now that head is a lot more contained and uh, I think it's feeling pretty good
So I'm gonna tone down uh, just that that uh, neck a little bit there. So it has an even uh, less of an impact. But you can tweak this as much as you like to get that head as, as subtle as you want, or you can make it more broad. It's really up to you. It's it's pretty much just playing playing around with it like we're doing there. So it puts the head in a good spot, and um, now I you know remember that we didn't cycle the pelvis or the chest, so I'm just kind of grabbing all the pelvis curves here, cycling them out, um, and then just kind of checking how that cycle hookup if, it, if it's given us um, good tangent curves. So the rotate X here on frame 1 and 33 isn't the same, so I'm just going to copy that over, make sure it is. And then we got a little bit of a dirty curve there, so I'm going to lift frame 1 and 33 up to favor that extreme. <clears throat> and I'll just tweak these tangent handles so they work a little nicer together. Keeps our spacing stronger. Slight adjustment here on the Rotate Z. I like that we didn't have, you know, a lot of major things here to correct with the main part of the body because we took our time and blocking and blocking plus to get it right, you know, and tone things down and get it to the stage, so. This feels good. We check that. Just kind of offset these rotations on the pelvis now, just by one frame. So they're not on the same frame as the translates. And that gives us a little bit of overlap with those rotations. So as the hip is translating down, um, the max rotate down for that hip and, and X will happen one frame after, right? So you can kind of compare, um, quickly compare your curves, you get lost on the offsetting. Um, but I think this is a quick way to get some nice overlap here. So just one frame offset to the Z. And, oh, there's a, there's a keyframe that's really out of whack there. So we're just gonna pull that back up into place and we gotta cycle that. So I don't know how that got missed when we grabbed everything. Tweak those tangent handles. Now that weight shift is working better. Um, also this guy. Let's all, uh, cycle that. Uh, translate Y isn't identical here. You can make it identical if you want. Um, I think we got this result from following the reference and trying to um, stick to the, the really the up and down that we're getting from that reference. But I'm just gonna pull that down. So it's it's pretty close to the other high point. Um, but that way we have uh, a little bit more change through there. And overall, um, you can insert a key to really round it out and control the high point like that. Um, but overall, we got more change through those um, those frames. That's a lot of what polish is too, is just like playing around with those those small changes there and seeing if that makes it feel just right, you know. So this translate X 
just using this arc tracker to check that figure eight and see if we can tweak it to make it even better um, rounded in any areas that feel a little linear. And that should cover this pelvis. I think this is in a good spot. So let's cycle out the chest next real quick. So this will actually loop and we can like extend it to, you know, 100 something frames. Cycling that out, offsetting by one frame. That rotate X. Didn't mean to shift it there. Okay. The rotate Y. Rinse and repeat. Same deal. That's why cycles can feel uh, pretty formulaic because you're you're re repeating a lot of the same thing once you have it set up cycling things making the you know doing a little bit of offsets there's the rotate z feels pretty good let's grab these guys and just uh to translate y and x cycle them Tweak those tangent handles. It's still a little uh, ugly there on the end. And that feels pretty solid. So let's move on to the belly. Now, when we were watching this in the front view, I saw that belly really kind of swinging out quite a bit. So I'm going to try to tone that down, kind of like we did with the head. Oh, before we do that, though, we just offset the chest. Um, and the offsetting we did on the neck and the head was all based off the old timing. So we got to make sure that we offset the, the neck and the head one more frame for each of these curves again, uh, just so that it's, it's actually following the chest. It's coming a little bit later than the chest does. It's dragging behind. Grab the rotate Z there, shift it back one. Shift it back one and tweak that weird tangent curve. That should feel better. Now, let's get back to this belly here. Okay. You can see how it really swings out there to the side. So we're just gonna try pushing that back in and uh, I don't wanna have it do too much because we'll get some really weird shapes for the, the spine. I'm just trying to tuck it in a little bit. I like using the top view to move it and then using the front view to see uh, how much of a difference it's really making. And I want to make sure that it's not really hitting a wall anywhere there and that it feels smooth. So just kind of playing them back there, I think it's good. Um, now, I would like to add just a little bit of offset in the, in the Rotate Z. So the belly kind of has a little bit of de uh, delay from the, the chest, the way it really rocks up to the side. Um, I think that would be nice to see if we can get that in. So I'm just going to quickly set some extreme keys here. 
So 25, you know, we're really tilting the, uh, like the opposite direction of the way the chest is going. Um, and I'm going to favor that. And then at frame 9, um, I had it on frame 10. Uh, on frame 9, we have the opposite extreme. Clean those tangent handles up. Get it cycling better. Probably going to drop those down. Yeah, we could try scaling that up instead and see what we get. Um, and then, well, it feels it feels uh, it feels detached from the chest. So I'm gonna type in the value box slash equals negative one, which flips the curves, auto tangent it, then tweak our frame one and thirty three tangents. So it's just the reverse of what it was, and uh, and then let's offset it by a couple frames so that it doesn't hit its extreme at the same time as the chest. And that's a little closer to, I think, what we wanted. It feels like there's a little bit of a hitch in there. Uh, let's see where that's coming from. Yeah, it might be that weird little loop right there, I think. So, yeah, okay, so we got some flat keys here. Um, so we just need more change on them through here. They don't need to flatten out, they need to favor some extremes. Um, and this needs to cycle as well. And I'm just kind of seeing which key I want to favor here based off of the curve we got um, in the loop. I think I think that'll be fine. We could fine tune it more, it's just uh, not that noticeable. As long as we got rid of that hitch, which I think we did. Um, and now that belly is a lot more toned down than it was. So it looks good for the front view. Here, I don't think it's too bad. We could, yeah, we could, we could tone down the rotate a little bit. Uh, it feels like the swing is causing it to, to come out a little bit, so too much, you know? So I'm gonna just half that. Yeah, we'll just grab this rotate Z. Um, go into the value box, slash equals two, divide in half. And now that'll be less intense. We can uh, cycle this out, tweak those curves. Probably, probably drop that down a little bit. I think we'll just take this curve too and uh, scale it down. Uh, I will just skip that. I think it, it works fine the way it is. I'm not gonna spend hours on that. I think the think the belly's in a good shape. So we can move on to the final task, getting that tail in there. It's a little bit meticulous with all those joints, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's kind of like how we've approached the neck and the belly of just copying curves. So I'm gonna grab the pelvises, rotate X, and I'm gonna apply that to the base of the tail, rotate Z. And we're using an FK tail. Um, and we've got that global set on for the tail so that the hip movement doesn't affect it. And the tail can move, rotate separately from it. And it's much easier to control the overlap that way. And then <clears throat> we're gonna offset each, uh, we're gonna offset this by one, and we're gonna copy this curve to each uh, of these like 20 different tail curves. So I'm just gonna copy and go to each one and apply it real quick. So just pasting, pasting those that curve in again and again on the rotate Z. 
it's gonna totally script the shape that we had for the tail um, we'll just have to get it back after we have it added in there again you don't need animbot to do this but uh, it makes it a little bit faster or you could use some other script I guess to copy the animation um, So because we're adding that rotate, it's just kind of bending the tail all the way in to the body. Makes it kind of annoying to grab. Um, so I'm going to start sh shaping that tail out by grabbing the whole curve and bringing it down. So that it's kind of bending at, the tail's bending where we want it to be. And I'm doing this because I just want really quick, easy overlap. Um, it just works with the body. Rather than trying to key them all together and get like small amounts of rotation that work by hand, this is just a faster way to get a decent result. Yep. Just bringing those out. Trying to get back more towards that S shape that we had. And this actually might be all uh, a mute point. Um, I'm just like, it's easier to grab the tail right now um, when it's out like this. Uh, but it might be a mute point because we're gonna stagger all of these really quickly. Um, so they're all going to be like one frame offset from each other. You could do it by hand and just kind of slide them all one frame after another. Which with this, these many controls you can make a mistake doing that really quick. Um, I'm going to use a script though to help with that. So right now I'm just going to select everything. And I'm going to use Graphite 9 or, or Brian Hogan's uh, stagger script. So I'll put the link in the description on, on that, on where you can get it. Um, but this allows me to select a bunch of controls like this and say offset it by one frame. So every one of these is offset one frame from each other later. And that way we get some you know quick overlap out of this without having to go through each one manually and slide it over. Just saves us some time. And Right now it's working, it's just a, a little bit too much overlap. So I'm gonna grab everything again um, and, and probably scale all that down. Yeah, just do like a mass scale down by two and then start adding some of the overlap back in. So you can select everything like this all the time as you're working on tails. Uh, it's super common that they have this many controls. Um, but selection sets here, like I'm using with Animbot, as you saw, it just popped up. Um, you know, you can quickly select all those controls and save yourself time that way in the future. And I just divided all that in half. So now the tail shape is really rigid um, and not that appealing. So I'm going to go towards the base of the tail and try to give that more rotation because it's you know, towards the tip of the tail, it's gonna be uh, more flexible than where it's really attached uh, closer to the pelvis. So I'm just gonna go back in here and um, use asterisk equals two. So that's multiplying, multiplying what we have by two. Um, just for these bottom three joints right now. And you could just scale it by hand too to see, you know, if you can um, just kind of feel out how much how much overlap you want through all of this. It's starting to feel a little bit better with with this being amped up, um, and then maybe we can get, just get away with shaping the tail more appealing, so it's not so straight. So I'm gonna take that guy and uh, bring that down, and just slowly shape each one of these so that we get more of that S curve back again that we had this 
is a little bit meticulous, you know, to have FK with, like, to do this with this many controls, but FK, I find, is always uh, easier to manage when it comes to overlap for this kind of thing. Um, you know, when you've got to rotate and translate and you're just trying to do, like, a little bit of overlap, uh, it's a lot more work, I think, IK, to do something like that. Maybe if you've got some kind of constraint set up, it would be easier, but... See, look at that. We get it a peeling shape. We had the, the base of it do a little bit more movement, and it's more or less working. I think from here, I'm just gonna um, scale down the tip of the tail and probably scale up the, um, the joint, the second to last joint there. So I'm gonna divide that by two and then uh, multiply the second joint by, by two. Um, just so, you know, we get a little bit more movement out of that. Overlaps a little nicer. But you can tweak this stuff, you know, all day to get it feeling just the way you want it to feel. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next rotation on this tail. Um, so really, we just gotta do the same thing here. Uh, I'm gonna quickly go through this. I'm gonna copy over the rotate Y of this hip and we're gonna apply that directly to the base of the tail on the rotate Y. So really just doing the same thing. And I'm just gonna scale this one down by two before I really even get started. Um, clean up these curves a little bit, make sure we still maintain like the high position there. Um, tweak those in and out tangents. I'm just going to copy that and then uh, I'll start applying that to each of these controls really quick. So I'm just going to quickly run through this, I'll speed the video up a little, save you, save you some time. So we're in the final stretches of doing the work on this tail. So it's really just repetition, tackling these rotates one by one. I prefer to, to you know, to do it this way to really, um, make sure that the overlap is working in one direction before I add add on too many layers there and get too confused as far as what the tail should be doing. Um, and here, you know, the tail is obviously bent too much overall. Um, I'm going to stagger them just like we did the rotate Z. So they're one frame apart. And we're going to scale it down so it doesn't, you know, sway so much left and right. And then I'm going to try to just kind of keep that more straight in the middle there. So I'm gonna just play around like moving that whole curve for all those joints up and down so it's pretty much in the middle of the, the lion's body. I don't want it favoring one side. And then we're just gonna go ahead and uh, do the same thing here to the final rotate. So the Rotate Z off of this pelvis control is going to be the Rotate X, you know, the only one that we haven't done for this tail here. The thing that you should really keep in mind as you're, as you're doing this, um, as you're working on tails, is this that in a walk, uh, it doesn't overpower the rest of the walk. You want the tail to be something that's more subtle um, compared to like the chest and the, the pelvis movement, and the legs, it's very easy to make the tail overcomplicated and flow too much. And then it just, uh, because it's moving so much, it takes all of the attention, uh, away from the walk. You know, it steals, steals the walk's thunder. So keeping it toned down, um, is what you want to aim for. And this is one way, just like I said, to, to really keep it simple, focus on one at a time, and uh, that way the tail doesn't get too complicated. So this is more just me, again, doing a new rotate on Rotate X, applying that to all these controls, copying that animation from the base into all the joints that go down. 
so that we get a complete roll out of this tail from all, all angles. And then we'll be able to call this walk done here uh, really quick. So this is the final stretch, the meticulous final stretch. <laughs> Feels pretty smooth to me. I'm just gonna scale that down. Um, I want the, the rotate Z to be the most dominant part of the movement. And that feels pretty fluid. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, just for how quick we kind of threw that into place. Um, Then all we gotta do is stagger it. So I'm gonna make sure I have all my controls selected all on rotate X, select them, stagger, boom. They're all offset. And then uh, I'm just gonna drag them late one frame later so they don't happen on the exact same frame as the pelvis the rotation stone and that wraps up our cat walk cycle you've just learned so much about how cat cats move mechanic wise and how quadrupeds move in general this is something that's like i said very difficult for a lot of animators to do so if you do a decent job it could get you hired it's my hope that this tutorial unlocked the quadruped animation door and it starts you animating creatures more comfortably from now on. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified whenever more come out like this in the future. And if you want a cat run cycle tutorial right now, you can grab it for free. Just click the link in the description below and then you'll have two cat animations that you can put on your demo reel instead of one. What kind of step-by-step -step animation tutorials would you like to see next? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to chat with you about it and hear your ideas. And until next time, happy animating.